Hi, everybody. Welcome to another session on one question a day. Today's question will be the development of tongue. The key points that you need to mention for the development of tongue question for short notes is about the underlining the uh, development of two lateral lingual swelling and medium swelling from the tubercular impar at about four weeks of intrauterine life from the first pharyngeal lodge via, via the copula or the hypobranchial eminence, third median swelling formed by the posterior part of the fourth arch near to the laryngeal orifice, the relationship with the arytenoid swelling, the role of lateral lingual swelling, how they increase the size, the role of tubercular impar, how they merge to form the body of the tongue, the tongue mucosa, how it arises from the first pharyngeal lodge, sensory invasions, the role of terminal sulcus, the root of tongue, the second role of second, third, and fourth pharyngeal large, how the tongue muscles, the myoblast, and occipital samites, how they are governed by the hypoglossal nerve, and to end it with the sensory and motor and taste supply to the tongue. About two diagrams are important. The second diagram is the role of the sensory motor taste supply, which I will not cover in this presentation. Development of tongue, human tongue starts about the fourth week of life. The local proliferation of mesenchymes gives rise to the, at about the fourth week of life. The local proliferation of mesenchyme cells along the mandibular uh, arch gives rise to swellings in the floor of the mouth. The first swellings is the tubercular impar and forms the basis of the development of tongue. On either side of the tubercular impar, lingual swellings are given rise. The lingual swelling on either side fuses with each other with the tubercular impar to form the mucous membrane of the anterior two-third of the tongue. The third swelling, the hypobranchial swellings or the hypobranchial eminence gives rise to the root of the tongue. And at this point, I would say, draw this diagram. The first arch, second arch, third arch, the lingual swelling, the tubercular impar, the hypobranchial eminence, how the small. It would be nice if you can draw this diagram in color. The hypobranchial arch, swelling develops from the third arch, most important. The mesenchymal growth in the third arch exceeds that of the second arch, thereby eliminating it from the further development of tongue as shown in this moment. It overlaps it. The hypobranchialum gives to the root of the tongue or the posterior one third of the tongue and differentiated by what the student failed to mention is the sulcus terminalis. The anterior cupola gives rise to the root of the tongue. The furthermore, the hypobranchial eminence, the posterior bud gives rise to the epiglossis. The tongue separate from the floor of the mouth by a downward growth of the ectoderm, which later disintegrate to form the lingual frenum, forming the lingual sulcus. Be very careful. This is the lingual frenum, which gives or responsible for the tongue mobility. The muscles of the tongue originates from the occipital somites and are innervated by the leve. 12th cranial nerve, the hypoglossal, the anterior two-third of the tongue is innervated by the trigeminal or the fifth cranial nerve, the nerve of the first arch. The root of the tongue is innervated by or contributed by the third arch nerve, namely the glossopharyngeal nerve or the ninth nerve. The applied, when the tongue exceeds the normal growth, it is called as macroglossia. When the tongue is small, it is called as microglossia. When the frenum is not completely disintegrated here, that it calls as ankyloglossia. When there is no tongue development, it is called as aglossia. That brings to the end of the one question a day for the development of tongue.